So we've done two videos so far on the UV Package Manager tool for Python applications. And this is a new tool that's gaining popularity in the Python ecosystem. You can find links to those videos in the comments section and in the description of the video. In this video, we're going to move on and we're going to look at tool management using UV. And what we're going to do in this video to demonstrate this is look at integration of two packages, and that's Rough and PyTest. So let's get started with that. And we have a coffee page linked in the description if you want to support the channel. Thanks very much to everyone who's contributed so far. Now on the features page of the UV documentation, and this page is linked below the video, we're going to go to the section on tools. Now you can run and install tools that are published to Python package indexes. For example, the rough tool or black. And UV provides some commands that you can run in order to work with those tools. So for example, you have the UV tool run command and that's going to run the tool in a temporary environment. And there's a shortcut for that, and that's the UVX command. And the UVX command, you can think of it as being similar to pipx. So these two commands are equivalent, and they give you a way to run the tool in a temporary environment. Now, if you want to install a particular tool user-wide, you can run the UV tool install command along with the name of the tool that you want to install, and that's going to make it available across your entire system. So for example, if you're always using rough for your formatting and linting, you can install that using this command and it's going to make it available in all your UV environments. And similarly, you can uninstall and list tools as well as run the update shell command. And that command will update the shell to include the tool executables. Now what we're going to do is go to this guide on tools. Now many Python packages provide applications that can be used as tools and we can run the UVX command to invoke a tool without necessarily installing it. So for example, to run rough, we can just run the UVX rough command. And as was mentioned a second ago, that's exactly equivalent to running the UV tool run command along with the name of the tool. Now, if the tool needs arguments, you can provide these after the tool name. And we're gonna see some examples of that as well. Now tools are gonna be installed into temporary isolated environments when you use the UVX command. Now, I want to look at this note here just before we move on. So if you're running a tool in a project and the tool requires that your project is installed, and that's going to be the case when you run the PyTest command or the MyPy command, then you want to use the UV run command instead of UVX. Otherwise, the tool is going to be run in a virtual environment that's going to be isolated from your project. So whether you run UVX or UV run is going to depend on the structure of your project and also whether it's a project or a single script and so on. Now I want to actually get started now and look at the code that we had from the previous video. So we had this extremely basic fast API application with a single route handler and we were running this using UV. So if we look at pyproject.toml, we had fastapi and uvicorn as dependencies in pyproject.toml and we had at the moment a dev dependency of rough. And notice that the dev dependencies are in a table in the pyproject.toml file called tool.uv. So that's where you can declare your development dependencies. What we're going to see is that using this pyproject.toml file, we can actually manage some configuration for the tools that we're going to use in a project. And UV will then be able to read this from a single file, this one here, and it's going to cut down the number of files that you need to have in your project. And that can be a big benefit for configuration to consolidate that in a single place. So let's get started with rough. What I'm going to do is just minimize the sidebar at the moment. And we're going to go to the terminal and we're going to run the UVX command here. And we're going to look at this main.py file. So if I run UVX, the name of the tool that we're going to use is rough. So we specify the name after the command. And rough has some subcommands that we can then execute here. So for example, if we wanted to check the contents of main.py for any linting issues, we can run the UV rough check command. We pass the name of the file and that's main.py. And you can see when we run this that it's preparing the package rough, it's downloading that, and it's going to then execute that in the environment. And you can see that all checks have passed for the rough check command. So that's how we can invoke rough in a temporary environment. And of course, because it's a development dependency here, you can see it in the tool.uv section. We can also use the uv run command. And what we can run here is rough check. And again, we're checking a single file and that's main.py. And this time it's not going to use a temporary environment. It's going to use the .vem directory within the project. And that's the virtual environment that uv sets up automatically when you start running commands. So what I'm going to do just to demonstrate how to work with rough and UV here is I'm going to turn this file into something that doesn't quite conform with some of the standards in Python applications. So I'm going to copy and paste some code into the file. So we're going to remove this code here and I'm going to paste this in again. And you can see now that we have 
a file that doesn't really look very good. We have imports and we have no separation between the imports and some of the variables and functions that we're declaring here. So it's not exactly in the style that Python would expect. And we're also importing a module that we're not actually using here. So we can use rough to detect these instances and tell us about them. And then we can either go and fix them manually or for some of these, rough will provide an automatic fix. So let's see that in action. Now I'm gonna save this file and let's clear the terminal at the bottom. And we're gonna use UVX again. And remember that's gonna run in an isolated environment. So you can imagine that we don't have those development dependencies with rough in pyproject.toml. So we can run the check command again. And again, we're gonna pass main.py and now we get some outputs here. So I'm gonna make the terminal bigger so we can see this. The requests module is imported, but not used. And the output also gives you the rule code here of F401. And that rule corresponds to an import that's not actually used in the application. So what we can do is we can actually run this with dash dash fix in order to resolve this. So this is something that rough knows how to fix. So let's pass dash dash fix into this command. And before we run this, I'm going to minimize the terminal. And hopefully we can see the requests import is going to be removed here. And when we run that, you can see that it is removed. Now, if you want to know more about how Rough works, we've got a link to that in the description of the video. What we're going to do now is we're going to extend the rule set for Rough. And we can do that in the pyproject.toml file. Now, again, you can find much more information in that previous video. But let's go to this tutorial here. And this is on the rough documentation. If we go to the configuration section, you can specify some rules either in a pyproject.toml file, or if you want some rough specific configuration files, there is also the option of a rough.toml file. And what we can do here is add tool.rough or tool.rough.lint. And that's where you can specify some of these rules. For example, the line length for rough's formatter. And you can also use the extend select option if you need to extend the default rule set that Rough is going to use. Now what we're going to do just to demonstrate this is we're going to use extend select in the rough.tool.lint table within the pyproject.toml file. So let's go to pyproject.toml and underneath tool.uv I'm going to add tool.rough.lint and this is going to specify the rules for the rough linter when we use that. Now, if we go back to the documentation, I'm going to copy the extend select option that we have here. And let's go back here and add that under this section. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a broader rule set from Rough. So let's go back to the documentation. And if we go to the section on rules, I'm going to include all rules with the prefix E and W. Now these come from Pi code style and we have errors, which is what the E stands for and warnings, which is what the W stands for. Now examples of errors include this one here when you don't have an indented block when one is expected. For example, if you define a function, the body of that function should be indented and same for conditional statements like if statements and for loops as well. Now what we're going to do is go back to pyproject.toml and to add the entire rule set, we can get rid of the explicit rule code and we're just going to reference E and I'm going to add W to this as well. So we're extending the rules that Ruff is going to use when we run these commands. So now if we go back to the terminal and what I'm going to do is rerun the UVX rough command, we're going to check main.py and this time we get a new issue appearing in the console. And that wasn't there before. What we have is no new line at the end of the file and you can see the error code of W292. And this error code comes from the rule set beginning with W that we've added here. So what we've done here when we run this rough command is we've specified configuration in the pyproject.toml file and for any number of tools that we have in the project, there's a good chance we can define the configuration in pyproject.toml for all of these. And that's gonna remove those individual config files from our project potentially. And that might be something that you want to do just to declutter your project directory and so on. So to fix this, it's very easy. This no new line issue that we have here, we just need to add a new line manually. Or again, when we run the check command, we can pass the dash dash fix flag and it's going to automatically add that new line. And again, if you want more detail on Rough, check out the previous video that we did on the package. Now I'm going to clear the terminal and as well as a linter with the Rough check command, we also have a formatter. So we can run the Rough format command. And again, I'm going to pass the explicit link to the file. And when we do that, you can see it's reformatted the entire file according to those pip conventions. So we have the imports at the top, we declare a variable here, and then we have some lines between that variable and the function, the handler function in FastAPI. So now we have reformatted the file using rough. So that's one tool that we've added to the project and we specified the config in pyproject.toml. We're now going to add pytest and we're gonna add a small test for this very basic 
FastAPI route handler. Now, in order to use PyTest, we need to add it as a dependency. So if we go back to pyproject.toml, you can see at the moment we have this dependencies array and we also have dev dependencies. We've got rough in the development dependencies and we're going to add PyTest also to development dependencies. Now I'm going to clear the terminal and we can use the UV add command. And if you want to know more about that, see the original video we did on UV. And we're adding PyTest to the project and we want to pass dash dash dev. That's going to add it to pyproject.toml as a development dependency. So let's execute this command and you can see it's installing PyTest. Very quickly it does that, it's rapid, and it's also added PyTest now to the development dependencies array in the pyproject.toml file. So let's go back to main.py. This is a very simple fast API route handler and it returns a bit of text, or so it seems at least, that says hello from fast API. What we're gonna do in the directory is add a tests.py file. So tests.py, and this is where we're gonna define these tests using PyTest. Now, FastAPI has a few utilities for testing, so I'm going to go to the documentation. And FastAPI under the hood is going to use a framework called Starlet. So a lot of the power of FastAPI is built on top of Starlet. And Starlet provides a test client that we can use. Now, the test client uses HTTPX, and that's different from HTMX, which I've done a lot of videos on. This is HTTPX, and that's a package that allows you to send HTTP requests, and it has an API that's very similar to the requests package. And that's a very common package in Python to install when you're working with requests. And as it says here, you can use PyTest directly with FastAPI. Now we are going to need to install HTTPX as well. And here's the pip command, but we are going to use UV. So let's go back to VS Code. I'm going to go back to the terminal at the bottom here. And let's clear this out and we'll press the up key to get the last command. What we're going to do is also install HTTPX. And that's going to add that to the dev dependencies in the pyproject.toml file. Again, you can see how fast that was. And if we go back to here, you can see it's been added. So now that we've added that, what we can do is go back here and we're going to bring this import of the test client from the FastAPI test client module into the tests.py file. So let's paste that in there. And if we look at how this is actually used, you can see that we pass the application object and that's the FastAPI app object into the test client to get back a client variable. So what we're gonna to have to do is import the app object from main.py. It's this one here on line three. So I'm gonna do that at the top and it's from main. Let's import the app object. And then we can create a client here. I'm gonna invoke the test client and we're gonna pass the app into that. Now, if we go back to the documentation, what we're gonna see is we have a function here called test read main and that sends a get request using this client and then it inspects the response and performs some assertions on the response object. For example, the status code and also the content of the response. Now we're going to do something similar. So let's go back to our file here and we're going to define a function here called test main. And the reason we're calling it that is because we have a main function here that returns this text here, hello from fast API. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the client and we're going to get a response by calling client.get. So we're going to send a get request just to that route. And we're going to check that we get a 200 status code. So we're using a PyTest function here. We can just use the assert keyword in Python and we're going to assert that response.status code is equal to 200. We're also going to check the content of the response. So if we go back to main.py, I'm going to copy this string here, and we're going to make an assertion here about what's in response.text. So let's assert that response.text is equal to that string here, hello from FastAPI. Now I'm going to save this, and we're going to run this test. So let me minimize the sidebar there, and we're going to go back to the terminal here. And what I'm gonna do on the terminal is run the uv run command. So it's uv run and we can run pytest because it's now installed in the virtual environment. So if we run pytest, let's see what happens here. Now you can see it's collected zero items. It's not found any tests. And the reason for that is that we haven't told pytest where the test function is, where the test files are or directories. So pytest doesn't have a clue where to look for tests. So we're gonna fix that in a second by adding some config to pyproject.toml. But what we can do is we can actually pass a file name to the pytest command. So if we pass tests.py and then run this, you can see that it's collecting that and we actually have an assertion error here. And if we look at the assertion error, we can see this line here. Assert that hello from fastapi with the string at the front of it is not equal to this one here. And this looks a bit weird, but the problem here is actually that the response contains JSON content. It's not a text response, it's a JSON response. 
What we want is actually a plain text response here. So what we're going to do is fix this problem because if we look at this function here, we just want to return a string. We don't want this to be part of a JSON response. It should just be some text. So what we're going to do at the top is import the response object from FastAPI, and then we can return a response directly here. So I'm going to paste the response object there, and we're going to pass a keyword argument of content and set that equal to the text content. And we can also pass a media argument here, and actually that should be media type. And we can set that to text slash plain for a plain text response. So we're returning a response object, we're setting the content, and we're setting the media type for that response. So let's save this and go back to the terminal. And if we rerun this again, you can see that the test has passed. So that's a kind of subtle error when you return something from a fast API route handler. By default, it's going to return JSON. So the media type for that is going to be application slash JSON. But we've changed that here by returning a response object and setting the media type directly. Now, what I want to ideally do here is just run PyTest using UV. So for example, when we pass the file tests.py, that is now working because we're telling PyTest where the test functions are. But when we just run PyTest there, we're not getting any results. It's not collecting any tests. What we want to do is add some configuration to pyproject.toml to tell PyTest where our test file is. Now, in order to do this, what we're going to do is go to the documentation. So I'm going to open that just now. And this is the configuration page on the PyTest documentation. Now, what you would normally do in a project if you're not using pyproject.toml is you would define a pytest.ini file, and that takes precedence over other files even when it's empty. And what you can do is define the pytest block here and add your options for when the pytest command is run. For example, you can add this option here called test paths, and that can point to directories and individual files that contain your tests. Now, of course, we're working with pyproject.toml, so what you can do is add a table for your PyTest INI options. We're going to copy this just now, and let's go back to our project. So underneath the rough table here, we're going to add one for PyTest.ini options. And we're going to add some options to this now. And the first one we're going to add is the test paths. Now, if we bring back the sidebar here and we look at what we have, we have a single file within this project directory called tests.py. So we're going to add that to the array of test paths. And that's all we need to add in order to find the file. So if we save this now and go back to the terminal, I'm going to clear this and let's rerun UV run PyTest. Remember beforehand that was not collecting any tests, or it's now finding our single test and that's passing. So what we've done here is just add some config for a new tool to the pyproject.toml file, and that's for pytest.ini options. And we've added the test paths. And that means that when we run the UV run PyTest command, PyTest will use these options and it's going to find the file. And we can add other options here as well. So for example, if we wanted to run this in quiet mode, we can use the add ops key here and we're going to set that to a string. And if we pass minus Q to that, that's going to run it essentially in quiet mode. It's going to turn down the verbosity. So let's save this. And if we rerun the command on the terminal at the bottom, we're going to see we get a lot less output here because it's now in quiet mode. So we can add any number of valid PyTest options into this table here in the pyproject.toml file. And then when we run the UV run command, or indeed UVX, it's going to read these options from the pyproject.toml file when it actually applies the tool. So that's been a very quick intro on using different tools with UV and specifying options in pyproject.toml. We've used rough and we've used PyTest in this video. But of course, there are many others you can use, for example, black and isort, or you could use things like MyPy as well. Lots of different packages in Python come with executables on the command line, and you can install these into temporary environments with the UVX command, or you can install them user-wide on your system with the UV tool install command. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page we have in the description. Thanks again to everyone who's contributed to that. And if you want more UV videos or any other tools that are similar to this, let me know in the comments. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.